Hi, Kevin here. It's Sunday and I'm in the mood for cookies, okay? So today we're going to test out the coffee and spice drop cookies from this 1940s Betty Crocker picture cookbook. All right, the recipe starts with three and a half cups of sifted all-purpose flour. And I did weigh this flour and it is 456 grams. Yeah, so you wanna sift the flour first, then measure it. And to the flour, we're going to add one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Oh, that smells so good. And one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And then just give this a good whisk. Let me grab my mixer and then we'll get started on the other ingredients. All right, I'm going to be using my stand mixer outfitted with the paddle attachment, uh, but you could absolutely use electric beaters here. So what I have in the mixing bowl is one cup of room temperature butter. Uh, and the cookbook called for one cup of shortening, but I know a lot of you don't want to use shortening, so we're going to use butter. Then I'm going to add two cups of dark brown sugar. Actually, the cookbook didn't specify light or dark, so I guess you could use either. Then I'm going to add two large eggs, and these are at room temperature. up. Then I'm going to beat these at medium speed just until they're well combined. All right, we look very well mixed here. And I did scrape down the bowl one time. I actually beat this for about four minutes at medium speed. Scrape off the paddle here. Okay, detach the bowl. All right, then we're going to add the coffee. Now, this is a half cup of cold coffee. Freshly brewed this morning and then left to cool to room temperature. Then you just want to stir this in. And again, I've not made these cookies before, so I don't know how they will taste, but based on the ingredients, I think they're going to taste terrific. Let's get this blended in as best as we can. Okay, then going to add the flour mixture. I'm going to stir this in a little at a time. I need my spoon. Also, I want to fix the camera so you can see a little better. Move you down. Okay, well, I hope you can see all right. So again, this was three and a half cups of sifted flour and one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Just going to really fold this in. Now I mentioned that the recipe called for one cup of shortening. And I think the reason 
all of these 19, you know, 1940s and early 1950s recipes called for uh, shortening or margarine is because pure butter was not always available right after World War II. It was barely available during World War II. So people use vegetable shortening. Okay, well, I'm going to finish folding in all of this flour. And when we're all mixed, I will come back. Actually, I'm back. I figured you should see this recipe in real time. So it's just that last bit of flour. And I said I was folding in the flour, but really I'm just stirring it. You don't have to fold it. We're not making a souffle. Okay. Again, oh, <laughs> I wish you were here so you could smell this cookie dough. Very spicy indeed. And you can smell the bit of coffee in here as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is pop this into the refrigerator for, oh, 15 to 30 minutes just to let it chill so it will be easier to scoop out and onto the baking sheet. Oh, and while the cookie dough is chilling, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I double checked the recipe and it did say to chill the cookie dough for at least one hour. So I have chilled the dough for one hour. Now, it also says to uh, drop rounded teaspoonfuls about two inches apart on a lightly greased cookie sheet. Now, my grease is a sheet of parchment paper. Okay, so now here's how you can uh, form the cookies. You can use two spoons, like teaspoons, and well, I'll do one here for you. You can go like this. Or, much easier, I think, is to use a cookie scoop. And I have a small scoop and a not-so-small scoop. I'm going to use the not-so-small scoop for my cookies. There we go. And let me zoom you in a little bit so you can see. And the recipe says that this uh, recipe makes six dozen cookies. However, I am not going to make all six dozen today. And the reason is because if I do that, I will eat six dozen cookies today. So I'm just going to do enough cookies for one baking sheet. And then I will freeze the remaining dough. And then I can have cookies whenever I want them. Okay, I'll finish forming these cookies and then I'll come back. All right, I managed to fit 20 cookies on this baking sheet. So I'm going to pop this into the oven for, let's see, it says eight to 10 minutes. And I'll come back to show you the finished cookies. Okay, here are the cookies, all baked and beautiful. And again, they smell terrific. So I'm going to let them cool on the baking sheet for about five minutes, and then I'll transfer them to a wire rack. And when they achieve room temperature, we'll have a taste. All right, taste test. First, some café au crème. I just brewed a fresh pot of coffee. Here are the cookies. Oh yes. Mmm. 
wonderful. The cookie has a crisp edge, but the interior is soft. Oh, very, very delicious. Mm. Coffee. Okay, these cookies are excellent. I love the flavor combination of brown sugar and nutmeg and cinnamon and coffee. So please give these coffee and spice drops a try someday. Again, the recipe is from the 1940s Betty Crocker cookbook. Yeah, try these cookies. I will post the list of ingredients in the description below. And Thank you so much for watching. Really wish you were here to help me eat these cookies, okay? All right, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.